and welcome to Big Little Ten Festival. My name is Mark, also known as Big Man in the Woods. We've got Grace and Tom Tom here. And we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how you and your children can get out in the back garden and do some camping during the Big Little Tent Festival. Guys, are you ready to do some camping? Yeah! Let's do it. So whether you're a seasoned camper, whether you go camping every year, or if this is your first time camping, we're going to give you some tips and tricks. You can do indoor camping. We've done some camps indoors, haven't we? Remember yeah. when we did the living room with our pop-up tent? We'll that put the link fun. below. Uh, also, if you just do some den building, quite often me and Tom will go into his bedroom and build some dens. You can do that uh, this weekend and just have a bit of fun camping in the living room, in the bedroom, whatever. If you're a bit like these two and too scared to go camping, why don't you just head into your garden You've got the luxury of being by the house, by your toilets, so you don't have to go too far and it's cheap. And if you haven't got any camping equipment, I'll show you what you can do in your back garden. So one of my favorite tents is this tent. It's the Van Gogh Force 10 tent. This tent here, believe it or not, is over 30 years old. All I do is use some uh, uh, waterproof sealant and just reproof it every couple of years. Uh, so this is kind of my go-to tent when we're doing the back garden camping. What I would say is this, don't, don't, um, don't, shell out a lot of money for your tent if you if you're spending hundreds you're probably spending way too much okay but what uh, what my other tip is don't buy cheap tents from the supermarket I can talk from experience they're rubbish you have one season they're ripped they get wet so fork out as much as you can okay if you're going family camping think about how many people are going in your tent and the trick is when you see a tent that is a one-man tent two-man tent up it okay so if there's a two-man tent Basically, it means one person plus storage, okay? So if you're just going with the kids, go for a three-man tent and go in your garden. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put up this Van Gogh Force 10 tent. In fact, I'm gonna get the kids to do it. Let's show you. There we go, there's our Van Gogh Force 10. The other tip, top tip, is when you put your tent up, put all your bags inside the tent bag, and then put that in the tent. Exactly, in the tent, because as always, we normally put this up in the wind or rain or something, and it'll blow away, and then at the end of your weekend, you'll be hunting for your tent bag somewhere in the garden, but it's in, tent, in the side of the tent. That's the first top tip. Remember, don't wear your shoes inside the tent. So one of the best things of camping is having a campfire, okay? And quite like many campfires, you can't have an open fire. And obviously we can't have it in our garden. Some people have fire pits or whatever. So what we've come up with at Scouts is the washing machine fire drum. Now, if you've seen me out and about, you've probably seen this bad boy. It's just a washing drum that I've taken out of the machine and cut a hole in here. You light it, put your logs in there. And here is the beauty. So you can use it as a campfire. You can cook on it. You can make your breakfast. You can see I've got my kettle on it. You can do a million one things for this. So cooking, boiling a kettle, having a cup of tea, most important. And in the evening, sit around here and have a campfire chat. So one of the best things about camping is the food. Whether you like s'mores or making jack potatoes on the campfire, there's a million and one recipes that you can do. But one thing I love doing when I go camping with my scouts is to make popcorn, all right? But one of the things about camping is not to spend too much money, okay? If you spend hundreds on your tent, you're afraid that the kids are gonna damage it, someone's gonna steal it, which is sometimes gonna happen. But the best thing about camping is just use what you've got and save the money. And as a dad, I'm tight with my money and I want to spend money elsewhere, okay? So what I love to do is recycling and upcycling. So we upcycled the washing machine. Now let's make our own popcorn maker, all right? Spend the money wisely on the food. This is a really simple thing. You can do it in the garden, uh, on the campsite, wherever. But this weekend on Big Little Ten Festival, make your own popcorn maker. And this will cost you probably about two pound, three pound max. What are you gonna need? Like Blue Peter says, Grace is going to tell us what we need. What's this? A long stick. A broomstick. What's this, Grace? 
two sieves from Poundland. It says two pounds, and that's it. All right, I got an old bit of coat hanger to wire it around the handle, and that's all you gotta do for your popcorn maker. Okay, get your, your fire nice and hot, and what then you've gotta do is you've gotta get the popcorn kernels, okay? Get the microwavable ones. Uh, you can get them in all different flavors, the ones that we have on a Sunday afternoon to watch the movie. Just what you gotta do, same as the popcorn. Empty those kernels, uh, uh, take them out of the bag though, empty them into the sieve, put that lock on there, and this lock is just basically so the kernels don't come out. And then you would hold, if I had my fire going, you would hold that, you can put it in the fire like that, or you can hold it just like that. And as it warms up, just like your microwave, they pop, pop, pop. So a few minutes, nothing happens. Hold them over the heat, start shaking those kernels, just like so. And then after a few minutes, pop, 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 pop. Popcorn! You have the most amazing popcorn, all right? And if we didn't have the washing out, <laughs> I would get this fire going and show you how to do it. It is so simple, just like your mi microwavable popcorn. Two sieves, a broomstick, and a bit of coat hanger, and you've got campfire popcorn. Beautiful. So one problem that I have living in London, and maybe the same as you, is trying to source wood, okay? So in London, it's not easy just to go to the park and pick up nice logs, okay? And also, you've got to think about the environment. Uh, in London, where I live, it's a smokeless environment, uh, so you can't just burn wood. You've got to get kiln-dried wood, and that's really expensive. And if you're out in the country, you can just go for a walk and pick up loads of wood and chop those woods. But like I say, I'm in London. So what I do, is we go to uh, different shops <laughs> and you can get these called fire logs and it's recycled chips of um, wood and paper and they burn for hours and it's really good just to put in your campfire. These ones you can't cook on, okay? So if it's just sitting around in the garden, having a nice bonfire, get these, light the paper and these burn. What are these burning for? Up to three hours. I've had them on a burning for four hours. Put two or three in your log. Put these in your... Uh, Fire pit, off they go. They give out some nice heat. They give out lots of light. Easy and a cheap way of trying to source wood. So let's just briefly talk about fire lighting really quick. Things that we can find out on our walks in the parks or whatever. If you're lucky enough to have some outdoor space, keep your eyes open for these bad boys. Different size pine cones, look at that one, that's awesome. But pine cones here are really good for fire lighting. And also guys, this isn't just for your campfire, these are some tips and tricks for making your barbecue go really quick as well. All right, so pine cones. If you're good at your tree ID, and if you're not, just learn one tree, okay? And it's a silver birch tree, okay? And it has really nice silver bark, peelable bark, and it's full of really good oils. And no, this isn't um, Brasso. Let's pull that. These shavings here are from the silver burst tree. And these bad boys are full of really good oils. And just a few sprinkles of that, you're guaranteed to get your campfire going or your barbecue. Other things to look out for on your walks around wherever you're going is some bulrush, some wreaths. These are really good at fire lighting. These are quite hard to spot. These are called King Alfred cakes and you can find them on fallen ash trees. Put a sparkle niche, which we'll show you in a short while. These are very good for fire lighting. So get yourself a little fire lighting kit. Even if you're a kid, just when you're out and about in your park, just try and find some things that you think would be good at fire lighting and have an experiment. Another one to go for, <laughs> if you're struggling to find natural stuff, I'm gonna show you a little hack. You can use cheesy Doritos. Okay, crush them up in your hand. They're full of these really bad oils, that's why they're bad for us. But it's really good for, for your campfire, getting them going. Prawn crackers as well. Uh, so dads and mums, if you're struggling with your barbecue, uh, if you're trying to get that to, to go, go into the kitchen and grab a handful of these. Your kids will look at you thinking you're crazy, uh, but these are really good. Crush them up, use them with a lighter or a match, <laughs> off they go. Really look about fire lighting, okay? So uh, if you're a young person following this video, make sure you get this done with a parent. Don't do this on your own and only do it uh, if you're an adult. 
and only do it under adult supervision. Okay, so we've seen this. These are called fire stills. It's got a whole load of different metals on it here. Here's a striker, and the whole purpose is to create sparks, okay? And those sparks will get your fire going, okay? Really, really simple. Uh, the beauty of these is if they get wet, they get going, okay? That you can still use in the rain. There's no batteries. Thousands of uses, unlike a match where if it's damp, wet, to one strike and it's gone. Whereas this fire still is just a couple of quid and you can get your fire going. Whether you're in the jungle or in your back garden in London like us, get your fire going. And this is how simple it is. So just like we do in the scouts, this is cotton wool. This is how we get the fires going in the campfire. Bit of cotton wool and a bit of Vaseline, okay? You don't need a lot of Vaseline. Okay, just a little, just a bit of Vaseline here. And remember guys, if you are wearing chapstick, be very, very careful of this because chapstick is just Vaseline and you could set your lips on fire. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so a few tricks on this. Take some scrapings off here, first of all. Okay, so scraping like that. And we're gonna hold the striker still and pull the fire still back. The reason is, if we did this, we'd knock over our, our tinder and our kindling. We don't want that. And also we've got a chance of the striker going in the Vaseline, okay? So we're gonna hold the striker still and pull the fire still back, just like this, okay? Easy, using a fire still. Now that will burn for a good, what, five, six, seven, if not 10 minutes. Plenty of time to start building up your campfire. What we do, even in beavers, which are age six, we get them to have a go at using a fire still, okay? And what they've got to remember is that fire is dangerous, but if you respect it, it won't hurt you, okay? If you mess around with a fire, put your hands in it, that's when it's gonna hurt you. But respect mother nature and she won't hurt you, okay? So let's see if Grace can get the fire still going. Come on, Grace. Okay, so this is a really, really simple thing. And as I said, if you're a young person, make sure you do this with an adult supervision. Don't do this on your own. Okay, so there's a few tricks. Hold this, the striker in your dominant hand, the hand that you write, you hold this, and literally just lift it up 45 degrees, bit of pressure, and you push it down, okay? Pull it down, push this bit down, pull it back, okay? I'm gonna show you a hack, or a, or a really good Big Man in the Woods tip, if your um, young person, if your kid is struggling to use this fire still. So let's see if Grace can do this. So remember Grace, hold this, hold that there, like that. And then we're gonna hold this one still and pull this one back. Okay, now the trick is to find the fire still that's got the silver bit, because it's got a coating on it, okay? Okay. Okay, so you see, this is quite hard for a young person to learn. So I've come up with this trick. I put them on sticks and I'll show you why. So basically this is to allow the person, the young person to still hold it. So Grace, put your hands on the tape, put your hands on the tape, right at the end, put your hands on the tape. And then you can control the direction, okay? So you can put the pressure and you can do it. Just relax your arms, okay? And then that person, they learn the motion of that spark. Okay, so, and it helps them grip it. So let's see if Grace can do this and get the cotton wool lighting. Use those sticks, Grace. So remember, use the silver side and hold this one still, pull this one back. Let's try again. You have to hold it, Grace. Easy. So it took us three or four attempts, but that is going, that campfire is going. Start feeding your sticks and build your campfire up.